ambulance will now take him to hospital. Am I gonna be okay? In 2003, David Blaine ate nothing for 44 days, leaving him dangerously depleted. My bone mass index, everything had decreased by about 33%. I lost 60 pounds in 44 days. But while it was finally time to eat, he was entering the most dangerous part of his fast. At the end of the stunt, when I went to the hospital, I almost went into shock. Starvation was killing thousands of people a day. During World War II, the people of the Soviet city Leningrad were suffering from widespread severe starvation. For a four month period from 1941, the only food available to the citizens was about three slices of bread a day. The bread was made from chemical wood pulp and milled wheat dust. Yet tragically, when some survivors were finally given a proper meal, this nourishment somehow caused them to die from heart failure. On the other hand, here's another weird phenomenon. Early last year, I was pretty happy when my doctor reported that my testosterone was relatively high for my age. But several months down the line, when I got my first blood test at the start of a five day fast, I was pretty disappointed to see my testosterone was half of what it was before. I was anxious about the fast because I knew prolonged fasting could lower testosterone, but to my relief, my testosterone didn't change. Then I got another blood test six days after I started eating, and I was really surprised to see that it had doubled to its highest level yet. My five day fast is of course no comparison to a 44 day fast or brutal starvation. But why exactly would eating provide benefits like raising testosterone after a short fast, but literally kill people who are far more starved? In this video, we'll take a look at exactly what happens during what I think may be the most important part of fasting, eating again. I keep trimming fit with protein. Protein. He knows the importance of protein. Meats and eggs are high in protein which helps build red blood and strong muscles. You may have heard of some opponents of fasting saying it's dangerous for reasons like testosterone goes down, sperm count goes down, cortisol, the stress hormone, usually goes up. In my own blood results, uric acid, which causes inflammation, went up while I was fasting. They should absolutely consult a medical professional. Yeah. Your diet is going to kill people. But by the same logic, we might say that exercise is bad. It increases inflammation and increases cortisol. But after resting and recovering from exercise, your inflammation and cortisol end up even lower than before. Way back in 1911, Upton Sinclair published in Cosmopolitan magazine two controversial articles that would eventually become a best-selling book, The Fasting Cure. There he described the several health benefits of multi-day fasts, and he claimed that how you break the fast is the most important part. This study found that five days of fasting increased people's cortisol, but after five days of refeeding, it was even lower than normal. For me, my blood test showed that five days of fasting reduced a mark of inflammation called CRP, but then my inflammation was even lower after eating again for six days. My uric acid unfortunately went up during the fast, but it was even lower than baseline after I started eating again. Biologist Walter Longo explains that fasting and refeeding is a process of breaking down and rebuilding anew. He calls fasting the auto repair mode, so as I mentioned, I got my testosterone checked three times, right before my fast started, one hour before I ate my first meal, and after six days of eating. My testosterone went from 421 to 424, but then it jumped to more than double at 887. Now I had read about this phenomenon before. Get set, begin. A study from the year 2000 looked at US Army Rangers who undergo a brutal eight week training course where they exercise seven hours a day sleep as little as four hours a day, and eat about a thousand less calories than they need. The researchers said that for four weeks, their testosterone steadily dropped to near castrate levels. Then when they were refed a sufficient amount of food, their testosterone almost tripled, shooting back up to normal levels in a matter of days. A 1981 study had been fast for 10 days, and then they refed for five days. Their testosterone decreased during the 10 day fast, but once they refed, four of the men had their testosterone shoot up even higher than what it was before the fast. One man doubled his testosterone from 800 to 1600. So what is going on? Well, fasting can set the stage for your body to be able to grow back stronger when you reintroduce food. As early as 1913, Dr. Sergius Morgulis was interested in this phenomenon where temporarily starving an animal seemed to set it up to grow rapidly once you refed it. In his paper, The Influence of Protracted and Intermittent Fasting Upon Growth, he cited research that claimed that chickens who were deprived of food and then refed grew to be heavier, stronger, and more solid. 
while specifically noting that the increase in weight was not from fat. Now, that's a hundred-year-old study, but in 2018, Walter Longo explained on a podcast with Rhonda Patrick that there's this growth factor called IGF-1 that helps grow muscles and brain cells. However, when you temporarily reduce this growth factor through fasting, Longo explains that this turns on stem cells. And when you get the IGF-1 back up by refeeding with protein, then these activated stem cells replicate and multiply themselves to stimulate the growth of various types of cells. The generation of healthy cells that are, is IGF-1 dependent. Right. Yeah, there is no doubt that when you refeed, you have to have sufficient protein to rebuild. And also protein are gonna drive the IGF-1. So the whole system, of course, is set up to uh, give the signals to rebuild. So what's happening with testosterone? Where this gets interesting is what fasting may be doing to the production line of testosterone. There's this hormone produced in the brain called gonadotropin-releasing hormone, GnRH, that is key in testosterone production and initiating puberty. GnRH acts on a specific part of the brain, causing it to release two hormones that finally act on the testes to produce testosterone. One of these hormones is LH, luteinizing hormone. In a rare disorder where an adult man becomes deficient in GnRH, his testosterone will be very low. Treating him with GnRH will fix this issue. So you have this nice testosterone production line that starts with GnRH, and you can in fact inject people with GnRH, and this will increase luteinizing hormone and then testosterone. Well, researchers did exactly this to find out how fasting affects testosterone production. They injected people with GnRH before fasting and 56 hours into a fast. What they found was that the longer the fast, the more sensitive the body was to GnRH. It raised luteinizing hormone more, and it raised testosterone more. That's great and all, but who's going to fast and then inject themselves with GnRH? Well, remember how Walter Longo was saying that when you eat protein after a fast, it increases the growth factor IGF-1? Well, there are several pieces of evidence from in vitro and animal studies that find that IGF-1 stimulates the release of GnRH. A 2021 paper in the journal Neuroendocrinology lays out how IGF-1 is suspected to play an important role in the onset of puberty as it induces the release of GnRH. People who have a genetic disease known as primary IGF-1 deficiency experience delayed puberty and short stature. To be totally clear, it's not firmly established that rising IGF-1 after a fast is exactly what raises your testosterone. And there are other ways fasting could raise testosterone in some people. For example, improving insulin sensitivity, improving mitochondrial function, or lowering triglycerides. But the point is fasting seems to prime the body to be able to increase testosterone production in some people when they eat again. A 1991 study on rhesus monkeys found that after the monkeys fasted, the bigger the refeeding meal was afterwards, the bigger the pulse in luteinizing hormone and the greater the raise in testosterone. In fact, they found that you got much higher pulses of luteinizing hormone on a refeeding day compared to a normal eating day. So there's something about stressing the body with fasting and giving it nutrients to recover that provides many benefits. Exposure of cells or organisms to a mild stress can enhance the ability of the organism and the cells in that organism to more severe stress. Fasting researcher Mark Madsen points out that exercise will provoke the growth of fresh new mitochondria, but this happens during the rest period after exercise. He explains that while fasting increases our resistance to stress, it's when we refeed after a fast that makes the body rejuvenate and grow things like new mitochondria or brain cells. So how should we break a fast to get the most benefits? This phenomenon where people can die of a heart attack from eating after starving is called refeeding syndrome. Well-meaning soldiers desperate to help the starving prisoners in the camps of World War II shared with them biscuits and chocolates from their own rations. But sadly, that food quickly killed them. In David Blaine's case, after he was escorted away from his box by ambulance, they started refeeding him with Ensure Plus. This stuff is basically a fake milkshake made with vegetable oils and a multivitamin tossed in. Here are the first ingredients. Water, corn maltodextrin, sugar, milk protein concentrate, and blend of vegetable oils. If you're not aware of why I find the idea of drinking vegetable oils totally nauseating, check out this video on why heart healthy vegetable oils are probably toxic. And sure, because you don't always have the time to eat right. Ironically, the authors of the clinical report on David Blaine themselves explain why a sugary oil shake after a fast is an awful idea. They explain that when you eat again, this causes a sudden rise in insulin. 
and where the body had been carefully balancing the levels of electrolytes in your blood and cells, this insulin rise causes the electrolytes to rush into your cells and sodium to rush out of the cell and into the blood. The effect of this is that the blood is diluted and the volume of your blood increases and this leads to heart failure. So in this particular situation, if a sudden rise in insulin is the problem, why not avoid feeding people a carbohydrate rich meal? After all, carbohydrates are well known to induce a much bigger rise in insulin than fat or protein. That liquid blend of sugar and vegetable oils they gave David Blaine has more carbs than a can of Coke. Dr. Bernard of the YouTube channel Chubby Emu has made two different videos about cases of people presenting to the emergency room with refeeding syndrome. What did these people eat? Well, first off, they both simply ate way too much, but it was mostly carbs and sugars. In one case, a malnourished woman suddenly ate a huge container of cookies. In another, a woman fasted for seven days and then ate 23 bananas. In Upton Sinclair's old book on fasting, he talks about a man who broke a 50-day fast with tons of fruit, half a dozen figs. This led to intestinal abrasions that had him lose a lot of blood. So the first obvious rule to breaking a multi-day fast is to eat slow. Along with taking it slow on the carbs, you probably want to go light on the fat as well. I broke my five day fast right away with a fatty ribeye steak and my stomach felt a little queasy, probably because my body wasn't used to having to produce bile to digest fats. It wasn't much of an issue, but I imagine it would have been much worse if I didn't have so much experience with fasting. Upton Sinclair also mentioned people suffering from slight bile attacks from eating over fat beef, but they quickly recovered by eating leaner beef. So to get the growth benefits, you'll want to eat protein after your fast so your body can increase its growth factors to allow for rejuvenation of the body, as Walter Longo explained. I'm not here to guarantee fasting is the secret testosterone hack. There are still lots of questions like, what's the ideal amount of protein to eat after a fast? Can you expect a testosterone rise after refeeding after just a one day fast? What about three days? And why did four of these guys get a boost in testosterone after fasting, but not the other two? The point is to say, while it may be alarming that testosterone can drop during a fast, it should bounce back at least to normal when you eat again. For David Blaine, the 44 day fast probably crushed his testosterone, but after he started eating again, his testosterone rose from 449 to 867 in 10 days. 44 days is an extremely long fast. Obviously there has to be a point where you are fasting too much. You need to balance your fasting with refeeding and nourishing your body. Just like you can overtrain with exercise, you can of course over fast. Like Dr. Mark Matson explains, fasting and refeeding are both necessary to get all of the health benefits. Now, fasting can be daunting, but to make it easier, you can supplement electrolytes. That's where this video's sponsor, Element, comes in. Because a fast puts you in a low insulin state, you can experience fatigue and extra hunger from the kidneys excreting electrolytes. So adding electrolytes to your water can really bring your energy levels back up. Let me point out that you don't want to pound salt and electrolytes right after a fast because the spike in insulin from refeeding can cause too much electrolytes to rush into the cell. I usually drink tons of these during long fasts, but actually even if I'm not fasting or doing low carb, I found Element gives me more energy, especially when I'm working out. Element tastes great, and my favorite thing is there's no junk in it. It's just a well-balanced mix of electrolytes, sodium, potassium, and magnesium, a bit of flavoring, and some stevia. There's also a raw unflavored type if you prefer. If you go to drinklmnt.com slash what I've learned, you can get a free sampler pack with any purchase.